The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, St. Patrick's Day. It's March 17th, Wednesday, and, you know, I, we just had that time change in the U.S. over the weekend, and, you know, I, I realize it's uh, for some people, especially in some countries, I know in Asia, they don't change the clock. So, you know, I'll just give uh, people uh, just... 10 or 15 more seconds to come in and uh, get started. But you know what I'll be talking about today is effective order flow trading strategies. And I'll be honest, you know, when when Biden won the election, I thought the markets would sort of calm down a bit. You know, I mean, with Trump, you know, it's, that was always a knock on Trump that, you know, everything is so chaotic. But, uh, you know, these markets are, are have not disappointed from a trader standpoint. You know, there's a lot of opportunities every day. So what I'll be talking about today, everybody, is, you know, strategies that you can take away and use in your trading. And, you know, I think the best way to trade is by using the order flow because basically order flow gets you as close to the market as possible. Right. You want to be know you want to know how the market is reacting to what's happening in the market, the current activity or you know, the current buying, the current selling. And that's important, right? Because you don't want to be reacting to something that happened earlier or, you know, some sort of mathematical equation that could uh, weight things that happened before a little bit heavier than what's happening now. You want to be based your trading on what's happening right now in the market, right? That's going to give you the best, the best, basically the best advantage over other traders, right? That are using, um, you know, indicators that may be lagging the market or, analyzing things that happened in the past it really has no weight on the future okay and order flow i'm going to show you allows you to gauge the tendency a market will continue in its direction right anytime a market is trending right you, you always want to get on that trend but eventually that trend is going to stop you want to be looking for the signs you know saying uh, you know the you know imagine you're on the airplane you're asleep then all of a sudden you know the, the you hear on the speaker uh, good morning, everybody. We're making our final approach to you know O'Hare Airport. Uh, please fasten your seatbelts. And the same thing with the market, right? Market gives you clues that you know what the market's about to land. You know, either stop its move up or you know end its move down. And the new trading activity that comes into the market, which is the volume, depending on how that is trading in the market, is going to tell you if we're going to continue in that direction or if the market's going to be coming in and making its landing so to speak okay and you know, lastly you know the, the the thing that is really useful about order flow is it gives you more information than basically everybody out there right you're not competing against the market you're competing against other traders right so if you can see things in the info, in the data right in the trading that's happening that they're not paying attention to or they just don't understand how to how to use that information you're going to have an edge over them because at the end of the day it's not you against the market it's you against the other traders how you can take the money out of their pocket and ideally put it into your pocket and so today in this training you're going to discover an easy way to use order flow in your trading i'm going to explain what makes order flow so different and so much more effective than traditional market analysis you know there's a big difference between reading the order flow and reading a traditional bar chart right a traditional bar chart is just based on open high low close right but really what you want to do is you you want to be looking inside each bars and see you know why did the market open here why did it trade up here why did it trade down there and then finally closed and we'll show you strategies that traders are using right now in the markets so again why order flow is because it's based on what's happening right now in the market right you trade based on the present not the past it's going to give you better vision of, of what's going on right imagine you're in a sports analogy you know you're, you're playing football soccer right you're watching how the other team is lining up you know how they're reacting in the same way with trading right when you're trading you're watching how the market develops right changes that are happening in the market and how you could use those to your advantage because at the end of the day you have to trade what's happening right now now my gift to you is a free copy of my book trading order flow now you're not going to get a hard cover copy like this you'll you'll get the information on how to download it and you can put it on your phone your computer print it up 
Um, you know, it's a 150 page book that I wrote after I left JP Morgan. And, you know, this was sort of originally supposed to be my contribution to the trading world. And I'm gonna show you how to get it for free, okay? So for those of you that are new to one of my presentations, who I am. My name is Michael Valtos. I've got over 25 years professional trading experience. I started on the CME trading floor, okay? And then I left the trading floor when electronic trading started happening, right? This was back in the early 90s and Globex at the time was really starting to um, pick up, okay? But nowhere near what it is today. You know, it was, you know, S&Ps at that time, the big S&Ps were still trading. You know, it would trade, you know, if it was a very busy day in the night session, it traded maybe 4,000, 5,000 contracts, right? And, you know, currencies, you know, if you traded 1,000 um, Deutschmarks, you didn't have the euro started up later. But at that time, you know, it was like, it was still a Deutschmark, Swiss francs. You know, those contracts would trade six, 700 contracts a night. So I started, you know, when it was very quiet and I saw the evolution, but I, I realized that was the shift in the markets, right? Everything was going to go electronic. And so I wanted to be position myself for the future. So after spending about three years at Dean Witter, I joined EDF Man in Chicago, the big English trading company, right? It's been around since the 1700s. And, you know, they trade all sorts of commodities. They trade, you know, it's like the equivalent of what Cargill is in the U.S., right? I also worked for Cargill for about four years. I was even transferred out to Singapore to set up a trading desk for Cargill. After man, I joined Commerce Bank in Chicago as their Eurex trader, right? I was trading buns, bobbles, shats, um, DAX, Euro stocks, stocks, right? And I would trade that against the U.S. products. So Eurex at the time was, was really the first big European exchange that was all electronic, okay? This was back in the late 90s. And, you know... I, even then, right, I, I noticed the shifts in what was happening in the markets. Everything, once an exchange said, we're going electronic, it happened probably, you know, lots of times. It just happened within months, okay? And that's why after Commerce Bank, after 9-11, I took about six months off, traveled around the world, um, you know, sort of come back to reality. And then I joined Cargill in Chicago on their futures trading desk, and when the exchange in Singapore said, we're shutting down our trading floor, that's when Cargill sent me out to Singapore to set up an off-the-floor trading desk, okay? Then I spent about a year, year and a half in Singapore with Cargill. And then after Cargill, I joined JP Morgan. I was at JP Morgan for eight years in Singapore. I was vice president of futures trading. You know, we're on the desk trading, not, you know, a vice president where you're just sitting in an office looking at numbers or spreadsheets you know, writing emails, you know, on the desk, banging away day in, day out for eight years. And finally I said, you know what, I have it. I, I, I can't take it anymore. I had gotten married. I had my first child. So there's, I know how to trade. I could just, I could just walk away. I was in my early forties. I said, you know what, I've had enough. I'm going to trade for myself. I could write my book, you know, and just live life. Okay. And that's how order flows, the order flow company started right, is after leaving JP Morgan, I wanted to do something different, right, a different direction. Honestly, I didn't expect myself to get into software, okay, but the software that I was using at the time, you know, it was just wasn't good enough or complete enough. I don't want to say good enough, you know, it was, it was basic, basically. I mean, this is in 2013, 2014, and the software out there for reading order flow would give you Delta, point of control and imbalances, which I'll talk about in, in a minute. But I realize I have my way of analyzing the market using Delta, point of control and imbalances. So let the computer show me that, you know, sort of take off some of that heavy lifting from my shoulders, you know, doing the analysis, calculating it by hand or, you know, in, in my head on a calculator. I said, you know, take that analysis, put it in a computer. And that's why I created the order flows trader. Now, I, originally I created it just for my own use, but in my conversations with other traders, they said, hey, Mike, how can I buy that? I'm like, well, you know, this is something we just developed for myself. And once we saw the, you know, my programmer he says, hey, you know, you got, I'm getting a lot of people interested in this, you know, because I'd, I'd be sending emails to other traders. We'd, we'd be talking amongst each other, other order flow traders saying, hey, you know what? This looks good. I could, I could use this in my trading. That's how order flows trader came about, right? The commercial aspect of it. You know, it started as my own personal um, software, you know, that I was uh, that I was using. 
And it sort of blossomed into, you know, once everyone saw it and they said, hey, you know what, this can help my trading. I want to use it, you know, sell it to me, basically. And the charts and tools that I use in this training are generated from my order flow software. That's why I sort of give you that background on the software is because what I'm showing you while using my software can make it very easy. You can also apply what you're learning, you know, if you're using another company's software, right? Problem is people get into order flow and they're, they're taught about Delta point of control and imbalance, but they're not really taught how to use them in their analysis. They're taught, you know, what they are, you know, which is good. You, you should know what they are, but you have to know how to use it. Okay. And, um, you know, give you an example, right? You all go out and, you know, now everybody's got, you know, the, the latest iPhone or, you know, at least an iPhone 8 or something. Um, my wife's got the, the 12. I'm still on the 8 Plus. But th there's so many features, right? I don't even know how to use them all, right? And, you know, but it, it, the same thing is is like that when you, you're in order flow, right? There's a lot of data points, but if you don't know how to use it, it's kind of useless, right? It's just like buying a camera, Right, those big fancy Canon DSLR cameras that have all these, you know, f f stops, everything that that you want to use as a photographer. But if you don't know how to use it, you just put it in automatic mode, and you know, and you just spent twelve hundred dollars on a camera that you're really not getting the most out of. And it's the same way with order flow. If you don't know how to take that information that you're looking at, it's really not going to be very useful to you. Okay, so that's my goal today is to show you how you can easily see things in the order flow and apply it to your trading. Now, just before we sort of dive in, a brief disclaimer, you know, understand that trading is risky, right? You should only um, risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing your financial security or lifestyle, right? Basically, don't trade with your rent money, your mortgage money, your kids food money, basically, um, you know, and, and realize, you know, it's not a race against time. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you know what, Mike, I got, I got three months of, you know, I just lost my job. I got three months to, uh, you know, of pay coming to me, severance. You know, I need to learn how to trade so I don't have to get another job. Well, you're putting all that undue pressure on yourself. You know, that's that's not a good situation. You know, I, I could teach you how to trade, but at the end of the day, you know, trying to put all that weight on your shoulders, you know, isn't the best um, best scenario. And But the thing is with trading, it's a skill that you could take with you everywhere right whether after you retire you know after you get out of school if you want to quit your job you know learn how to trade and it's a skill you could take with you forever so again why are you here it's because you want to discover an easy way to use order flow in your trading you want to see what makes order flow so different and more effective than traditional market analysis and you want to learn strategies that traders are using right now in the market now for a lot of people they tell you well you know order flow is about reading the time and sales or reading the depth of market right the price ladder but honestly trying to make sense of the time and sales you can't it moves too fast for most people to i'll say most people pretty much everybody it just moves too fast and there's a lot of small trades that really confuse you and trying to read the depth of market you know, the market conditions for the last several years has been very chaotic that trying to read a dome and get anything meaningful out of it is is not practical. You know, if you're trading a slower market, you know, wheat, you know, some of the grains, yeah, you, the dome is incredibly helpful. But honestly, trying to read a dome in the, in the NASDAQ or micro NASDAQ, forget about it. It's just jumping around too fast for you. So everything that you see on a bar chart comes from time and sales, right? If you ever looked at a bar chart, you wonder, well, I don't know, some people probably don't, but all that information that you see comes from the time and sales. It gives you a lot of information, right? That's why people say, well, you should look at time and sales because you can see where the aggressive traders are coming in and, and hitting the bid, you know, when a market changed from bid to offer and so on. But the problem is it just moves too fast, right? Everything that you see on this time and sales here that's all within the same second. So you imagine, you know, you're really breaking things down to nanoseconds if you're trying to read time and sales. And it's, you just can't, right? It, it just moves too fast. But if you take that information and you put it in a footprint chart, it gives you more information that you can use, right? You could see the delta, the point of control, the imbalances. Now, again, that's sort of the gateway into understanding order flow is delta point of control and imbalances and 
once you understand those three points, it's going to give you a lot more ways of looking at the market, taking it apart and understanding what's happening in the market. So delta is the difference between aggressive buying and aggressive selling. Now, you know, I know some people like to argue that, oh, you know, a market went up because there's more buyers than sellers. Well, no, the market went up because there's more aggressive buyers than aggressive sellers, right? Because what is an aggressive buyer and aggressive seller? Now in the US, right, because of low interest rates, because of work from home from anywhere, because of a lot of the stuff happening in the big cities last year with um, looting and all that stuff, there's been a big migration out to the suburbs. So now it's a seller's market to sell your home. So perfect example, right? If you look for a home in, you know, outside of Chicago in the suburbs, a home hits the market, right? Half a million dollars. Now the seller lists his house at a half a million dollars. The buyer, now it has to become aggressive because property market is rising. So he just lifts the offer. He just, uh, I'll pay half a million dollars for this house. The buyer was aggressive. The seller was passive, right? And so say that person buys that house and the next house comes up. Oh, this house just sold for half a million. I could sell mine for 510. He lists his house at 510. Someone buys that, right? So you have more aggressive buyers than people coming in and lowering the price of their house. If the seller comes in and lowers the price of his house, he is being the aggressive seller, right? Because he will go down. Say the buyer says, you know, I like your half million dollar house, but I only think it's worth 480. So he bids 480 and the seller has to think, well, oh, you know, my neighbor wants to sell his house. He's also going to be selling it at 500. I got a buyer here at, at 480. Maybe, you know, I, I, I want to, I just want to unload my house before this before this buyer sees my neighbor's house come up for sale for half a million and buys his instead. So he knows he has a bid at 480, but he's offering it at 500. He goes down and says, fine, I'll sell it to you at 480. Now the seller has become the aggressor, right? He is aggressively selling his house to that bidder. Okay, so that delta measures the difference between the aggressive buying and the aggressive selling. So like right now in the housing markets, you know, if I were to measure the delta, I would say it's, it's positive, you know, whatever, because you have a lot of aggressive buyers lifting the offer, even paying in some cases cash over the price of the house. All right. And so it's very aggressive market in terms of buyers. I mean, there's a limited supply of houses. That's why the price is going up. Now, point of control is the price level in the bar with the most volume. And that's important because in a bar, you know, the level where everybody is happy to trade at is sort of the balance area of the bar, you know, where most of the volume is occurring. And, you know, people like to say, well, volume doesn't really matter, right? Because obviously for every buyer, there's, there's a seller. But if you've ever run a business, you know, whether selling things on eBay or, you know, a, an actual brick and mortar store, you understand that volume helps you determine your pricing right? Because if you're raising your price, but you're selling less, you're going to be making less money. So you're going to be lowering your price, right? You, you want to find that sweet spot where you can sell the most of your supply at a fair price. And think of it in the market, right? You have buyers and sellers, you know, people that have supply and people that, that want to buy that supply. So there's that equilibrium. There's sort of that, that fine sweet spot that the market will find you know, over, uh, if you're looking at a one minute bar, you know, over that 60 seconds, if you're looking at a five minute, over that five minute period, 15 minute, there's always going to be that sweet spot where everyone is sort of happy to transact, right? And that's what the market really exists for is for people to transact, you know, either to buy the supply, sell their supply, you know, or transfer risk, you know, at, at a level that's, that's fine, you know, like go out, you, you need to buy insurance, right? You can just go ask one agent, right? And he'll tell you, okay, yeah, you know, you want life insurance or whatever, a million dollar in policy. This is what it'll cost you. But if you're smart, you know, sometimes you go out and you look at three or four different quotes, right? And you're going to find the one that is makes more sense to you price-wise, right? So, you know, you could have one guy price in your insurance policy at $350 a month, but then everybody else comes in at, you know, 250 okay so the market is really valued at 250 not necessarily 350 now imbalances is the areas the price levels rather 
where aggressive buyers outnumber aggressive sellers by a particular ratio. Usually it's four to one or more. And the way to think of this is, you know, you're, you're looking at sort of the balance in the market. Okay. So imagine like me, I've got three kids. Okay. So I'm an adult. I've got three kids, you know, four, six, and eight. And if I play tug of war with them, it's, it's, you know, three against one, but you know, maybe me against two, you know, I, I might lose, but when you start adding in a third, you know, then the mom joins in and it's four to one against me, I, I, I'll probably lose. And that's how imbalances are. It's when you have, you know, aggressive buyers, people lifting the offer versus people hitting the bid, um, you know, outnumbering each other, right? And aggressive sellers would be, you know, you've got, say, 10 sellers versus one buyer, right? So the market is six bid at seven, but you have 10 people buying it at seven versus one person selling it at six. You would consider that a, a buying imbalance, right? Because there's only one seller at six, but you have 10 buyers at seven, right? You have more people aggressively buying than aggressively selling. So remember, right? All the information you see on your chart comes from what's traded in the market, you know, from what you see in the time and sales. Now, but a candlestick chart, it leaves out the most important part of data that's available to the trader, the volume, okay? And that's important. And the reason, you know, as a trader, you, you want to have as much information as possible, right? Now, people will say, well, what about information overload? Well, yeah, you have a lot of information, but you have to know how to use it, okay? You have to know, understand what you're looking at. And I'm going to get that in a second, but, you know, you see the market all the time, right? Markets move and it trades back to a particular level, and then it just takes off, right? This is yesterday in the gold, right? We're sort of moving up, we pull back, go back up, pull back, right at this level, literally right to this level. Well, why, right? Maybe there's something you could understand. People say, well, yeah, you have a double bottom here. Okay, as you know, they'll say that as you hit this bottom and then you're, you're breaking out to the upside. But as a trader, Right, you want to if you can see that hey, you know what, I have a double bottom forming as it's forming and understand why it's forming, you're going to be way ahead by getting along in here than the people that are buying this breakout up here, right? You know, that's that's a full dollar in the gold 10 ticks before everybody realizes, hey, you know what, we got a double bottom here, okay, and that's where something like the point of control. Is going to help you right and i mentioned right point of control is the price level in a bar with the most volume now every bar is going to have a point of control oftentimes it's going to be somewhere in the middle of the bar or towards the middle of the bar but there are times when certain points of control matter this is that area right down here this double bottom right here these the two green candles that follow the big red candle down okay and if you understand how to use point of control that's going to put you ahead of everybody else that's waiting for the breakout to happen to say this is a double bottom because you can confirm this double bottom pretty quick, right? As this bar is forming, as this bar closes, you can be getting long immediately in the next bar rather than waiting for so many bars to, to happen and you're breaking out of this high because now you're anticipating that, hey, you know what? I have a double bottom forming here and you could position yourself to take advantage of it. So in order flow, like I said, every bar has a point of control, but not every bar matters. Now, the order flows trader software will highlight to you the points of control that matter, right? It'll print it, color it um, a different color. I, every point of control will normally be gray color, but software, you could have software that's going to highlight it a different color. So you could just see, oh, you know what? I've got a point of control that matters. We call these prominent points of control, right? If they're blue, that's going to be support. If it's a uh, magenta color, which is like a, a purple almost, it will offer potential resistance. So I know why this market came back here because I hear I've got point of control right on the bottom of this bar. That's a bullish sign in the market. But then we come back to that level, we test that exact level, that prominent point of control that I had earlier. And the point of control this time is one tick up off of that um, 
off that low, but it's also a prominent point of control. So it's telling me that, hey, you know what? These points of control matter. This is, there was something interesting in the volume, right? That is telling you that, hey, you know what? You have support here. So I know I've got support as it's forming rather than waiting for this market to break out. I know already, yeah, the order flow is telling me there's some good buying, um, passive buying happening down here. And like I said, if you're using just any old software, the footprint chart, you know, whether it's Sierra charts or the Ninja Trader version of order flow, or, you know, there's a lot of other software out there. I can't name them all, but wouldn't it be easier if you had software that would highlight things that matter, like, right? Like the points of control. Cause like I said, every bar has a point of control, right? But not every point of control is going to matter. So, if you're doing it on your own, you know, you can sort of figure it out. You'd have to look at a lot of charts to understand what's going on. But if you have software that's going to highlight it to you, it's just going to put you ahead of everybody. Okay. Now here, this is mini NASDAQ. Okay. This is yesterday again, right? Similar, right? I showed you the gold chart earlier. But if you're looking down here, this is... Uh, actually, last night, about uh, 8.30 last night, you, you just sort of going sideways in here, okay? And then the market rallies, right? It rallies up from, you know, the 14, 15, 16 area all the way up into the 30s, okay? But if you're looking at the order flow, you can start to see, you know what? I've got some prominent points of control in here, right? But you have to know what to look for to see a prominent point of control, right? Right here, this this blue point of control is telling you that it's prominent. It's an area that we had been going sideways. Now we're really starting to build up the volume in here, right? So that's why understanding where prominent points of control come in is going to put you ahead of everybody. Because if you're just going sideways in here, right, just sideways, you're wondering, well, maybe we're consolidating and then we'll, we'll fall off. Or, you know, maybe if we start rallying, you know, where, where are you going to be looking to buy, you know, because... You know, people like to try and buy a breakout, but we're, we're sort of just sold off. You know, and if you're buying it here after a strong sell-off, sometimes it's not the, the, the most prudent move out there. But if you can see something in the order flow, it tells you, hey, you know what? There's some volume in here. Pay attention to it. You're willing to take that risk, right? You're willing to get long around the 13, 14 area with a stop just below this volume at 06, right? So imagine... You're getting, you're getting in here, all right? You're getting in, you know, after this bar closes somewhere around 13, 14 with a stop around six, five or six, you know, what is that? That's, you know, eight points. And then what? 12, you get in 12, 13, it rallies all the way up into the thirties, you know? So you're risking seven, eight points for, you know, 25, basically 25, you know, even at, um, even if you just get out up here at, at 24, you know, you've doubled your money, right? You went for, you got in at 12 or 13, you're out at 23, 24, that's 10 ticks. You've only risked seven ticks. Okay. If you held it longer, better. If you held it a little bit longer, even better. So, you know, that's where using the order flow is going to give you that sort of that head start over everybody else. Cause you know, at a minimum, they're waiting for this breakout up here at 17, but you can be getting in here, you know, around 12, 13, 14 ahead of everybody. See, this point of control matters, right? Yeah, I said you, you have a lot of points of control. Every bar has a point of control, but not everyone matters. Okay, say, well, you know, points of control are going higher. Okay, one, two, three, four points of control higher. Well, isn't that bullish, right? The market's going up. Yeah, the market is going up, but at some point, you know, markets don't go up indefinitely. At some point, things are going to start to change. And if you have something that's going to highlight to you that, um, you know, that things are going to change, it's just going to put you ahead of everybody else out there, right? Rather than, oh, I know things have changed here, sort of at this high, the swing high, rather than let it come off, and then you start, um, you know, breaking down, and then you're getting short down here at 42, 42 and a half, 43. Where would you rather be short from up here around the 44, 44 and a half area or 
42, 42 and a half. You know, you want those clues to happen as soon as possible. So taking it sort of the next step, okay, point of control, right? Point of control is volume, right? It's the point in the bar with the most volume. Now, in a new version of Order Flows Trader, the version we released back in October, you know, we've gone through, this is the, the third version since 2015. You know, we're, we're upgrading our software with new tools for traders. One of the things that we added was the bar value. Now, most people understand the value areas because, you know, they, they've done analysis or they've done reading and research on market profiles. So they understand, you know, sort of the value area, right? And that's the area in the in the profile where about you know 70 percent you know, some people use 68 percent of the volume occurs in the day's trading but you could take it a step further right you could do it on a bar by bar basis it's sort of the the area of the bar where 70 percent of the volume traded now you could actually you could adjust it right so you want to look at you know i just want to see the area where um 50 of the volume traded or even you know 33 percent you, you can adjust that but the standard is um, 70%. And when you start looking at the value as well as points of control and other things that I'll get to in a little bit later, you really start to break down the market and understand what's happening, right? So here's a market that had been going up, right? This bigger gray area, right? The darker gray is the point of control, but this bigger gray area is the value. So you have a value area high, in a value area low, obviously the point of control of the bar. But as you see these bars going up, right? You're seeing value basically moving higher, value areas going up, up, up. But then you see all of a sudden everything just changes in this bar right here, right? You wanna understand, you know, as a trader, you wanna get in on the turn as quickly as possible. Now we start going down, you can see now the value is going down, right? You even have a gap in the value area between this bar and this bar, right? And you've even got a, val a gap down here between this bar and this bar. But what about the value? Is there value, excuse me, is there value in the value area, so to speak? Well, yes, there is, because there's times that the value area is expanding sort of in the opposite direction to what had just happened, right? Imagine we just have this nice move up. Right, value area is going up for the most part. You do pull back a little bit, then it retracts and keeps going back up. But what if there was a way that you can see easily see that, hey, you know what? The value in the bar has changed, right? It's telling me something bearish, right? I do have a bearish prominent point of control. Okay. But what else if I, you know, what else can I use rather than just the point of control? You could use the value area. All right. So imagine here you have the market moving up. And it turned right in this bar. Now we're starting to see bearish point of control. We're starting to see bearish value area. It was what happened? Value area opened up above the previous value area and closed well below it, right? It's almost an engulfing value area, so to speak, right? But it's a shift in the value area. Obviously, the bar um, is heading down. Next bar opens up inside that value area immediately trades away from it. That's also bearish, right? So when you understand value and how it's happening in the market, you, know, you, you can start to see things changing in the market that other people aren't, okay? This is just your, your normal footprint chart, okay? It, and it just looks, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see points of control, go, you know, market sort of grinding its way higher, right? Sort of going sideways down here, come up a little bit, go sideways some more, go up a little bit, and then finally get that pop. But if you're looking at value, you could see here, right? You're in this sideways activity. Value area is telling you, hey, you know what? We're expanding, right? Value is getting bigger. And as value expands, right, the market is starting to look for sort of a different balance area, a new balance area. So you can see, right, just going sideways. Now we start expanding, okay? We find our new balance area then again you see the bullish expanding the bullish eva we call them um they, we call them evas so you can see here right it's also bullish so you got one down here one over here and the market goes up but this was the clue right if you're just looking at a normal footprint chart here 
you know, you sort of say, well, yeah, I can sort of see it, you know, sort of moving up here, right? We're sort of going sideways in the points of control. We got some positive delta. And okay, you know, you're probably willing to you know, get long somewhere around the 41. But if you're looking at the value areas, you can have noticed earlier here, you know, you can be getting long at 39, 39 and a half, even 40, rather than waiting all the way up here to 41 to, to really feel confident because now you're seeing the value areas starting to expand. So that's on a one minute chart, right? But about other chart types, this is a five minute chart. I, I use mostly e minis because that's the market most people trade. But again, I'm going to show you other markets as well. Um, and I, I show minute based charts. Sometimes I show range based charts, volume based charts. But again, it's not like you got to have 20 different charts open. You, you, the same things you would look for, whether it's a minute based chart or range based chart or volume based chart, it applies, right? All those different types of um, chart types. So here, this is yesterday, right? We sold off, if you remember, around 1130 down to around the 52 area, and then we rallied, okay? But what is that? You know, people say, well, you got a pin bar here, you know, et cetera. You know, I, I love these guys that live and die by pin bars because when they work, they're like, oh, yeah, look at me. I'm a genius. But, you know, they, they fail as often as they work, if not more. But if you start adding value, right, you can see that on the sell off here, you got a bearish EVA here, right, at the 63 area, right? You just you're selling off going sideways. It's just sitting in here. Then boom, you see in the value area get strong negative, right? And then you sell off. You get down here. Yeah, you have your pin bar down to 53. So imagine getting short somewhere in here, 61, 62. You get a move, $10 move down to the 50s, 52, 53. Then you start coming back up. Now, you could also use, you know, for, for a lot of people, you know, back in the days when there were trading pits, right? The markets would open and close and then, Nothing would happen until the next day. So there was a lot of analysis with gaps, you know, gap analysis theory. And people still trade gaps in things like stocks. But, you know, if you trade Forex, if you trade crypto, if you trade, um, obviously, futures, you don't see much gaps, right? Especially if you, because the markets trade basically continuously. But when you start looking at value, right, you, you can see gaps in the value, right? So... Here, right, this market's coming down, 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 and then it starts reversing. As you're starting to go up, right, you have a gap here between this green bar and this green bar in the value. If you're just looking at where bars open and close, you're not going to see gaps. But when you're looking at value, you start to see gaps, and that just opens up a whole other form of analysis for you is that gap analysis because things are important, right? There's so much analysis that can be done with value that it just really is is quite amazing you know we're just sort of scratching the surface on it because nobody's really ever thought about it looking at it on a bar by bar basis but you know imagine this green this red candle right here okay what happened okay well let me stick with this green candle here so you're coming down selling off okay and at this time early in this bar the value area is obviously below the value of the previous bar. And early in this bar, it's a big red candle down. So the value is, is lower, right? There's, there's a gap because we never went in and even into the previous value area. But the bar turned around, turned green, closed. Next bar open. So you have your value area high here at uh, 39.55 and a quarter, right? The next bar opens in the value, trades in that value, right? It comes r literally almost to the value area low. And then it rallies back up. Okay, and, and also that tells you something. But this bar forms, the value area here is higher than the value area here, right? And that's important. This one, I'm not putting, I'm not really using this in my analysis because yeah, we gapped down, but it was a green candle. So now I'd be thinking in my head, where's the market gonna gap up, right? It, you know, it, or is it gonna gap up, okay? You see the gap up here, gap up here, right? That, that tells you value is moving higher, right? And that's important. Now, another form of analysis is when you open up outside of the previous bar's value, right? Do you trade all the way through it? Do you trade into it? You know, and, you know, if you understand market profile, you understand that if you open above value and you start trading into value, 
there's a chance you could get all the way through that value and continue in that direction. As you see here, right? We opened above previous bars value area, traded into it, accepted it, got all the way through to the other side and just pushed much lower. So there's all sorts of analysis you can do with value areas. So hopefully by now you can start to understand how it becomes easier to trade order flow when your software helps you do analysis, right? So how much easier do you think your trading will become when you add in order flow analysis to it, right? We, we tend to make trading and things in general more complicated than it really needs to be. So the next thing I'll talk about is imbalances, right? And I've mentioned earlier what an imbalance is. And when you have more than one imbalance in a bar, you really got to start paying attention. Now, most traders are familiar with stacked imbalances, right? People always talked about stacked imbalances for a long time in the order flow, right? And what stacked imbalances here, you have three imbalances stacked nice and neatly on top of each other, right? Eight against 72, 11 against 123, 83 against 384. Okay, that's nice, right? Then the market, you know, sort of trading right or rotating around that aggressive selling before it finally sold off. Now this is a selling of balances, obviously eight against 72, it's about nine to one, 11 against 123, that's about 10 to one, 83 against 384, you know, that's about four to one. So depending on the imbalances that you're using, you know, the ratio, whether it's four to one, five to one, three to one, is gonna tell you if there's an imbalance at a particular price level, just like this green bar you have, two buying imbalances, you got zero against 203, you got 11 against 435. If it's a blue number in the order flow, that's a buying imbalance. If it's a red number, that's a selling imbalance. And oftentimes bars either have a buying or selling imbalance at some point, right? But when you start to see a bunch of them, you know that's when you gotta really be paying attention because it's telling you traders are getting aggressive right now, right? So here's a stacked buying imbalance, okay? You know, market has just been going sideways. You start to see a little bit of selling. You got a selling imbalance here, one here, two here. But then it came back with a stacked buying imbalance, right? One against 39, nine against 42, 52 against 371. And then it took off to the upside, right? Because as you're going sideways, you know, you had some aggressive selling, but then it came right back with that aggressive buying that sort of kicked off this rally, right? So knowing where this aggressive buying and aggressive selling is coming in at more than just one level is going to be important. Now, while stacked imbalances are nice, there's also bars that have multiple imbalances that aren't neatly stacked on top of each other. Are they not important, right? Yeah, it, it's very easy to see optically a stacked buying imbalance, right? Or a stacked selling imbalance. But there's going to be bars where they're not neatly stacked on top of each other, right? The market isn't always um, neat, right? It's, it's messy at times, but that doesn't mean that a bar that has many buying imbalances isn't as important as a bar that has a stacked buying imbalance, right? And again, this is this is this morning. Um, in the E-minis, right here, right? We, we hit this low, this is about 8.40, you know, 10 minutes after the cash open, came down to 39.30 and a quarter, going sideways, but then you're starting to see a bar with three imbalances, one, two, three, okay? Now, is that important or not important? Well, to me, it's I found it's very important, and it's followed up by another bar with three buying imbalances, one, two, three. Right, so imagine you're at your low of the day and you're starting to see the aggressive buyers wake up and come into the market, right? So if, if you're looking for stacked buying imbalances, you don't see a stacked buying imbalance here because they're sort of spread out. Here, you don't see a stacked buying imbalance because they're spread out, right? You got 24 against 102, that's the imbalance. 50 against 80, that's not a buying imbalance. One against 48, that's imbalance. One against 166, it's also a buying imbalance, right? So even in here, you've got three imbalances, but down here, you have also three imbalances. If you're just looking for stacked imbalances, you're gonna miss this trade, right? And again, it went up from 32, 33, all the way up to 40, right? Before you, what? You ran into a bearish prominent point of control. Even on this side here, you got a stack selling imbalance. This is a five minute chart. Okay, and again, 
your market's coming down, you're seeing some selling imbalances in here. One, two, three, four, five, six imbalances there. One, two, three, four imbalances here. But your market's selling off. That's what you're expecting to see. But then we hit a low. And the market starts turning around. One, two, three buying imbalances. One, two, three buying imbalances. Okay. But if you know that you want to look for them, yeah, you can see them. But again, have software that's going to highlight it to you. The, our software puts a nice box around it. Now, you will say we have selling imbalances here when you're talking about that. Well, yeah, we're selling off, we're selling into the lows. That's what you're expecting to see. But as you hit the low and you start rallying, you want to be aware of are there buying imbalances? You know, are they spread out? Okay. Here, right? Say you, you miss this trade, you're like, well, I don't know if it's strong enough. By the time you get in here, yeah, okay, the aggressive buyers are present. There's no denying that, right? And then the market rallies, you know, from 24 all the way back up. And again, if you're looking at a chart, bar chart, you're not going to see this information on there, right? You're just basically guessing, you know, are, is there aggressive buying in here? Well, I got a big green bar up. You know, it's a green bar, you know, people must be aggressively buying it here, you know, or people uh, got some red bars, you know, people are selling. Yeah, well, yeah, of course, but is it market balanced or is it imbalanced, right? I mean, you had opportunity to buy here, right? Market went up a little bit, then sold off. Why did this move work better than this move, right? If you bought it here, you probably got stopped out. But if you bought it in here, you know, you had... The first leg up, you pull back a little bit. You got a nice second leg all the way back up. Another you know, ten points here, but you really want to be watching what's happening in the market. <clears throat> so remember, trading the market is not just about watching price movement. There are many different moving parts to the market. Right? Are there imbalances? What's happening in point of control? Um, delta. You have to be using them and looking at price go up or down is not really giving you a full story. You can't survive trading a single market perspective. And what that means is you can't survive just trading price. Now, I know there's people out there that are successful trading price action, but they are very focused. And honestly, most traders aren't as focused as that. But why limit yourself to just price, right? There's a whole other realm of information out there that you know you just turn the page and, and you can see things that are happening that other traders aren't right you have to integrate that information that market generated information into your trading you know what the aggressive traders are doing you know how's the market reacting to that aggressive trading and going back to this chart right what's going on down here versus down here what makes this one so much better than this one well if you look at the footprint this is the first low here okay yeah i see one aggressive buyer here two aggressive buyers a little bit of aggressive buying but not much right that's why this move just sort of petered out and then fell over but this move down here the second part all right that's this low down here where this was the low that started this big move up from 40s all the way up to 60s what do we see we're starting to see imbalances buying imbalance buying you know then three up here this is a stacked imbalance. You got another one down here. So you not only have a stacked imbalance, but you also got other imbalances in the bar, right? The buying imbalances are coming in. The aggressive buyers are coming into the market, right? It's easy to miss if you're just looking at imbalances, right? Because you gotta be paying attention. Let software highlight it to you. Let it come in and say, hey, you know what? I've got a bar here with multiple imbalances. Now this is a stacked imbalance, so it would show up as a stacked imbalance. I have it turned off actually. But if you're looking at stacked imbalances, you'd see it. Okay, fine. But over here, right? Another bar with multiple imbalances. So you know this move has got the strength that you need to go higher. So, you know, even if, you know, it, it's scary sometimes trying to buy a low, right? And I'm not trying to predict the low. I'm letting the market tell me, "Hey, you know what? This is the low based on the information at hand." then it starts moving up maybe you want a little bit more confirmation bang you get that confirmation right here with another bar with a bunch of buying imbalances right this is 
yesterday, right? Remember, we were testing that high of the day, right? We came all the way back up to 70 and a half. Our high was 70 and three quarters. You got a bearish prominent point of control right here. And it's just like, mm, you know, are we going higher? Or are we going to come off? Okay. And again, it's like I said, it's a, it's, it's a tough trade trying to sell a high or buy a low sometimes because, you know, you, you're basically standing in front of a freight train, right? If the market's been going up and you're trying to get short, market sell off a little bit, then turn around and just run you over. But if you start looking at the order flow, right, what the aggressive sellers are doing, if you're at a high, then boom, right? You can see, right? If you're not noticing, if you're not really paying attention to what aggressive sellers are coming in, right? When you see it right here, one, two, three imbalances, it's a little hard to notice, right? Because, you know, the market's trading, right? And, and things are happening very quickly. But having software that's going to highlight, say, hey, you know what? I got a bar here. Pay attention to this. Then you start looking back, say, oh, you know what? I had a bearish problem point of control here. We're up at the high of the day. I know I got resistance based on the point of control. All of a sudden, now I see aggressive sellers coming in. Yeah, okay, I could get short this market. And you get short, you know, from the 67 area. And just it just sells off nicely into, you know, a quick, it's a one-minute chart. One, two, three, four, five, five minutes, five points. So that's imbalances. That is points of control, volume, value. Now, what about weakness in the market, right? What can you, what, how can you see areas where the market is weak, right? Would you like to know when a move up is weakening or when a move down is weakening, when that move down is losing its strength? Because when markets lose their strength, right? When moves lose their strength, that's when reversals can happen. And not only that, but in directional moves, right? Often have you have directional moves, then the market sort of goes sideways, right? Then you're starting to think, well, is this move over or are we going to, put a second leg in or are we going to reverse right so that is where the third part of sort of the order flow foundation comes in and that's delta right when traders first come to order flow you know one of their first exposures to order flow is the delta okay and delta is the difference between net aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers in a bar right but the problem is you learn about delta but then you don't learn how to use it, okay? And what's what's the point is, you know, you can probably figure it out on your own after a long time of, of studying the markets. But again, you can, you find yourself going down a lot, lot of paths that lead nowhere. Let the computer analyze this stuff for you. Let the computer analyze the order flow for you. Now, again, this was yesterday's high, right? What I just talked about with the bearish prominent point of control with the selling, multiple selling imbalances. But right here, right, just a few ticks off our high of the day, we're seeing market weakness, right? We're seeing this move up weakening. And that's important information. So you start putting it together. Well, you know, I got a bearish point of control. I got resistance here. I've got aggressive sellers here. And I've got weakness here, right? And weakness is the aggressive buying has weakened to a point where the aggressive buyers just aren't, active that much anymore right and when you remove that buying pressure from a market that's been going up right it goes up because you got more aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers but now aggressive buyers are being removed from the market then what do you think the market's going to do can it still go up well yeah there's still some potentially aggressive buyers but when it gets weakened to a certain level the market's not going to sustain that move anymore right and What's the next step? Well, the next step is if you remove those buyers, the move up isn't going to be very strong. The market's just going to naturally collapse on its own. I want to say collapse, but go down on its own. Okay, so that's that's important as a trader to understand where those levels are. And again, if you're just looking at a normal bar chart, you can't see, all right? You can't see that the, this move has weakened. You can't see the resistance up here in the point of control. You can't see the aggressive sellers coming in there. Right? You, you're just left to guessing it. You just say, well, oh, you know, this looks bullish actually because what you have happened here is you hit the high, you sold off, you probe down here, then you start coming up. You got a big aggressive bar up, right? Then you start trading higher. Think, oh, this is it. We're breaking out. We're going to hit new highs, new all-time highs and go higher. But if you're looking at the order flow, what's happening in here, it's actually very bearish. 
right? You got market weakness, you got a bearish primary point of control telling you there's resistance up here. Obviously, you got the multiple imbalances here, and we sold off. You know, where are we trading now? Uh, I don't know, I don't have my chart open, but where are we trading? You know, this morning we're trading in the 20s. It's 50 points lower. You know, what about this low here? Okay, this was yesterday, right? All the way, you know, 11.30, we hit this low at 53, then we rally up all the way back up into the 70s, uh, not 70s, but to the 60s. Okay, well, why? Because on that move down, this move down was weakening, all right? Wouldn't you like to know that, hey, you know what, we have this sharp, sharp sell-off, but as we're just putting in these newer lows, it's getting weaker, all right? And once you remove those sellers from the market, once that selling pressure is alleviated, what's the natural order of the market to do? Well, it's, it's to go back up, right? So you got that strong selling down in here, but it's turned and went higher. Why? It's because that selling pressure has been taken out of the market. It's gone. It's exhausted itself. It's sort of run through its course, right? And that's where having software that's going to highlight it to you, that's this blue up arrow, is going to help you as a trader. Now, what it does, you know, how it works is by reading the delta, right? Is delta getting weaker, right? As you're going down, right? Is the delta weakening? If you're looking at a normal bar chart, you don't even look know what delta is because you don't even have access to the delta information on a normal bar chart. But if you're looking at order flow, the transactions that go through, you can see the delta, right? You can see it weakening here. It's nine, positive nine, positive five, minus 400. Okay, that's strong, but then minus 300, then minus 81, right? It's weakened, all right? Where's the strong selling? You know, here you got some strong selling. Here you got some strong selling. These two bars, you got nothing. Basically, delta's at zero, nine and five. That's basically nothing. Here's 81, right? So the selling for this move to happen, continue going down, you need a strong, aggressive selling. Then instead, you see strong aggressive buying to the upside 500 delta 786 delta right crude oil yesterday right we had that nice big sell-off here right at at eight o'clock right but you know you you want to have some sort of clue earlier you know preferably you know here but if not here maybe even higher up here right because we have the swing high around what is that about 7 13 yesterday 7 15 we came off, right? This is that area right here, 7.15 in the morning yesterday. This is this right in here, okay? But you can see this market weakness, right? The market had been sort of trending a little bit higher. You know, you got a, a high here, then you got a, a higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, right? That's That's your wave analysis, right? you're putting in higher highs, but at this higher high, you see weakness come into the market, right? That's not what you want to see at a higher high, right? For the market to go higher, you want to see strong buying, right? But you can just see how this, this delta is very weak. You know, you're coming up here, you got negative delta, you're sort of working your way higher, negative delta. Then even the delta that you're coming into these highs, yeah, it's 38, okay, 16, 12. That's nothing as you're coming into this higher high and you know at this point you're trading what 6470 6468 right and then what happens it's right here right boom market sells off from you know the 64 65 area all the way down to 45 area it does pull back a little bit before it drops now again i'm not saying you could have caught this drop but this move right here this 20 cents is easy an easy trade to take Ultra bonds, okay, great contract to trade. If you're not familiar with ultra bonds, UB is the symbol. But what's happened here, right? You start putting these pieces together that I was just explaining, you know, a point of control that matters, prominent bearish, prominent point of control, multiple imbalances, market weakness, right? And then the market sells off, right? This was ultra bonds as well, right? You come into a swing low. You don't have any prominent point of control, but now you're getting multiple buying imbalances. And then you're starting to see the market weakness in the sense, now when you, it's a little confusing for, for people when you hear the term market weakness and you're looking to buy, what it is is the selling weakness, the selling 
is getting weaker, right? And as as you're coming off that high, putting in a swing low, starting to see the aggressive buying, but as well of the aggressive buying in here with the imbalances, that aggressive selling that you had seen earlier is is gone, right? That's your weakness, right? Now it's a bullish signal. That's why there's that blue arrow. Soybeans, right? Yesterday, right? We're coming off. You got your first sign here. Okay, market just goes sideways. And then boom, the bar that has market weakness, right? Telling you the selling has um, basically over, sort of played its hand. And then you got in that same bar, you've got multiple buying imbalances. Right, and then the market works its way back up. E mini five minute chart again. Yesterday, this was that one, right? This was the bearish EVA in this bar here. And you got your pin bar here, but you can see as this move is happening, the selling is getting weaker, right? It's 1100 strong negative, 1600 strong negative, then 300 negative, then again, another minus 306, right? That's it's also negative delta, but it's not strong, right? And people say, well, and then you see even in this bar, it turns up. People are going to be scratching their head. I got negative delta, but I got a green candle, right? Shouldn't it be a positive delta, right? It's a green candle. Well, not necessarily, right? In this bar, there's some strong volume on the bid side. So there was some support to absorb that selling that came in there. So even though you have a green candle with negative delta, that's often a sign of absorption. And that absorption is also measured in the weakness because as the market's coming down, if you have somebody absorbing that selling, well, if you know about absorption, right? People are selling into that into those buyers. And finally, all those sellers are, are pretty much done. They're removed from the market. And once those sellers are removed, what happened, right? The market went back up. Again, you know, E-mini five minutes yesterday or sorry, the 15th, Monday. The market just sort of going sideways, not really putting in direction. And then what happens? You know, as you're going sideways, the sellers just basically, you know what, we're fed up. We've been selling it and we can't get the market to move. Now they're done, right? They, they, they got no more bullets left, right? And then you got the weakness in the sellers, which turns into bullish for the buyers and the market put in a nice, a nice 15 point rally, right? E minis again, yes, uh, also on Monday, right? You can see it here. We just sort of open up, cash open, and just sort of go sideways. But you're not seeing that aggressive buying anymore right after the open, right? You just, you know, Monday was kind of a tricky day. Um, you know, you get these bars that just sort of, you know, they're not doji, you know, they're not bars that you open and close at the same level. But, you know, you got nice ranges, but in, in the market's looking for its direction. Okay, but what it's telling you is, you know, we just opened up, we got buying and selling, but now that aggressive buying is just sort of dried up, right? It, it's done, right? The the algos sort of ran through their orders that they had to fill on the cash open. And now that, that buying pressure has been removed and you can see the market just trades um, down about 10 points. Now, what's interesting is you can adjust the strength of the weakness levels that you're looking at. So you can see it happening a little bit early now you know if you dressed it to a to a on not a weaker level but a less stronger level than sort of the default you're going to get a lot more signals but it's important especially on moves that are happening okay i mean is there a difference between getting short off this bar or this one probably not in the grand scheme of things but where adjusting the strength can help you is in directional moves right a move up that sort of just stalls and goes sideways. But, you know, on a move up, why does a market often stall and go sideways is because you could have profit taking. People that were long earlier are getting out here. Okay, fine. They get out. That doesn't mean the move is over because there's still buying pressure in there. It's just that that it, that little bit of selling pressure people take in their profits. Once people have got out, took their profits, oftentimes you're going to see the move continue back up. Right. And what's interesting in this move is, again, you're seeing the weakness in that selling pressure, but then you're seeing the aggressive buying come right back up. So you start putting the two pieces together, the weaken, weakening aggressive selling followed by strong aggressive buying. What do you think the market's going to 
going to do, right? It's going to keep going up. Now, you know, being a trader, it's about understanding what's happening in the market, right? It's not about necessarily buying every single um, blue arrow or bar with multiple imbalance, right? You want to put it in context with what's happening in the market, right? Like you, you, you have to think, you know, I know some people don't want to and, and you know, fine, I, I can respect that. They, they want to have, you know, computer automate everything. Well, honestly, if that's the case, just give your money to a money manager. Um, but if, if you want to trade, you know, the, the big money is made from making good trading decisions, right? And leaving it up to a black box, you know, isn't always the best route to go, okay? So understanding what's happening in the markets, you know, I, is really going to put you ahead of everybody else out there, right? That's just relying on some red light and green light system, you know, by truly understanding, oh, I know that aggressive selling is weakening here and I see aggressive buying is coming in. That's going to put you ahead of everybody else, right? That's your edge in the market. So imagine where you could be in your trading once you're able to put the pieces of order flows together, right? While everyone else is still thinking, does this point of control matter? What's happening in the delta? What's happening in the balance, imbalances? You'll know, right? Instead of trying to figure it out because you got software that will tell you that, hey, you know what? This point of control matters. Hey, you know what? You've got a bar with a bunch of buying imbalances or a bar with a bunch of selling imbalances. And, you know, what's happening in Delta? Are, is the aggressive buying weakening? Is the aggressive selling weakening, right? So today I showed you how to use prominent point of control, value areas, extended value areas, multiple imbalances, market weakness. And, you know, these are just tools that are available in the order flows trader software. Now, again, I, I sort of talked a bit about how you can see it on your own by using, you know, just a plain footprint chart. I, I used to do that. Right, so you use a plain footprint chart to trade, and it it took me a long time. Right, I've been involved in trading electronic markets literally since the '90s. You know, they, I don't say the beginning because they had been around for um, a year or two before I, I left the trading floor to to focus solely on the electronic markets. But you know, I've been looking at a dome for you know, over 25 years, I've been looking at time and sales for over 25 years. And these are things that I would look for and I've applied it to my trading, right? So again, don't just go out there and start trading every single order flow, prominent point of control or extended value area or multiple imbalance that appears, put it in context of the market, right? You got to read what's happening in the market and, you know, understand it, right? I mean, just like being a doctor, Right. It, you know, you know how to operate, you know, based on a book, right? Oh, you got to cut here and do that. But then, you know, sometimes you cut, you know, doctor cuts someplace and blood starts squirting out, right? You have to be able to adjust for that. Okay. So trade in context of the market, right? That's what being a trader is. So hopefully you've seen how order flow just blows up a normal candlestick chart, right? What attracted to me to order flow years ago was being able to understand who's in control of the market, to be in sync with the market, to know why the market stops and reverses. And again, what I showed you can be done by just by looking at any footprint chart, but you need to know what to look for and when to look for it, where to look for it in the chart, you know, at highs or lows, or are you in a move? And honestly, when the market's moving, especially how it is recently, on days where the market's down hard, it's easy to overlook things and miss, right? Let the software do the heavy lifting for you. Let it show you things in the order flow like market weakness, right? So you can concentrate more on managing the trade than trying to think, should I even take this trade? And again, you know, order flow is about understanding what the traders are doing in the market, what the other traders are doing in the market, right? Takes all this information from the time and sales and processes it into an easy to read format, right? Don't make trading more difficult than it needs to be, right? Again, you know, as humans, we tend to make life more difficult for ourselves than it needs to be. So hopefully, you know, this past hour or so, you'll agree that it's been time well spent. But again, I can't cover everything in a 60 minute session, right? But I got a special offer for you that you can get everything you need to know about order flow, right? If you act fast, I'm gonna give you a special deal. It's the order flows trader. And it runs on Ninja Trader 8. It doesn't run on Sierra Chart. It doesn't run on TradeStation. It runs on NinjaTrader, OK? 
Okay, so it will run on the free or paid version. And it's the volume footprint chart that has 17 pre-programmed order flow tools. I talked about a few today. I talked about multiple imbalances. I talked about prominent point of control. I talked about, about market weakness. But there's a lot of other tools, right? There's obviously the value area, the extended value area. There is market sweep detector. There's imbalance reversals. There's a new thing that we have. It's called order flow sequencing. Um, and there's inverse imbalance, there's zero prints, there's market exhaustion. There, there's a lot of different tools. And it's very easy to set up. It takes about two minutes to set up. There's no need for fancy templates or anything. And normally the price is $8.99, okay? And imagine, it's like taking everything that I know about trading with order flow and put it into a program so that you'll see what the institutional traders are doing in the market. And I can say that because I was an institutional trader for close to two decades, right? And that's important because, you know, I see a lot of people teaching order flow and stuff like that, that they've never sat on a trading desk, right? They, they've, they got into trading and then they started learning about order flow, either from me or from other people. And like, oh, you know what? I'm going to start teaching order flow when they've never put in the time to really bang away at the market in the sense of understanding order flow. They're just basically taking things and regurgitating it. But I realized that having order flow is one thing. Having software is one thing. You need to know how to use it. So I don't give you software and say, here you go, figure it out. Because that's how it used to be, right? Honestly, it used to be you would buy software for how many thousands of dollars? And then it's just like, here it is, go figure it out. And then you're sitting there scratching your head, trying to make sense of it. And and I, I don't like that, right? Even for me, like when I buy software, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to figure it out, um, you know, on, on how to use it effectively, right? And also, you know, I mean, people today, we got less patience, it seems. So that's why I provide a lot of education on how to trade with order flow. So you don't have to keep um, you know, spending time and say, oh, does this, is this important? Is that important? I'm going to give you my order flow trading course for free. It's 15 hours of video instruction. Now, a lot of people have taken this course and pirated it, copied it, you know, and said, oh, look, you know, I'm an order flow trader now. And basically they teach you the same thing in the course, but I'm the one that created the course, right? It's, um, I sell this for $2.97 on my website. You're going to get it today for free. Okay. But also I have a few years ago, more than a few years ago, I, I created an inner circle for people that really wanted to, um, understand order flow more deeply. Okay. I created this inner circle and I've extracted the videos from it, right? There's 56 videos that you're going to get access to. And normally I sell just that video portion of it for 497. Okay. And it's advanced order flow tricks. I don't like to call it tricks, but tips and analysis. Okay. So you're going to get the course, you're going to get this inner circle video series right? Plus the software. And already that's almost $1,700. But again, you can spend all the time you want trying to learn from videos, reading books. I also have a weekly live group training session, okay, where you could come in and ask me questions. I'll talk about interesting things I saw in the order flow. Like, um, Yesterday, there was some nice big volume in the market you know, at, at a particular level, and I talk about why that, why that was important. And it's an area where you could come in and you know, listen, right? Ask questions you know, about anything, right? About the software saying, oh, Mike, you know, I don't understand what the function, what you know, this uh, indicator is about, right? You know, mark order flow sequencing. Well, I'll explain it to you. But it's a resource out there that you can go. Now, the slide says there's 92. There's actually over 111, 113 episodes. You know, I've been doing this for over two years already, right? And if you can't attend, again, it's every Tuesday night at uh, 7 p.m. It runs for about an hour or so. But again, you're, you're welcome to come in and join. Or if you can't join, you, you'll get access to the replay. So you could watch it at your, your own pace. But... You know, it's a great resource. Again, say you, you're trying to reach me over email or something and you couldn't reach me. You can reach me there. I'm always there because it's just me in the room with, you know, everybody that wants to come in. Right. So and it's just for our users. So you're able to ask anything you want. Right. 
next week I'll be talking about cumulative delta, right? And and how to read cumulative delta and, and be useful about it, right? And it's, again, it's a place that if you're struggling with your trading or struggling trying to understand order flow for you to come in and ask questions, right? I, I don't do one-to-one -one anymore. Um, I've offered it in the past, you know, like one-to-one -one mentoring, but honestly, it's quite expensive, but I wanted to have something where people could come in and sort of interact and ask questions um, and reach out to me for whatever reason, okay? Now, of course, I'm still available over emails. You know, you can always question, send me questions over emails, but you know I'm there and you'll get an answer instantly for the most part, unless it's a very complex question that would take me an hour. I, I, I have to either email you an answer or do a covered on the next session. But other software companies, they want to charge you for that, right? They say, oh, yeah, here's our software. And then a week later, while you're still trying to figure it out, you get another email. Oh, we're having a boot camp for $999. You'll learn how to use our software effectively. Well, for what? I just bought your software. Now you're charging me on, on how to use it, you know, how to learn how to use it. For what? That That's ridiculous. Um, again, you know, some people charge $200 a month for a room just like this, you know, they'll say, Oh, you know, join our club and you know, nine, two ninety nine, one ninety nine a month recurring forever that you can't cancel. Um, and it's only one session a week, maybe two sessions a month, you know, for what, you know, here it's for free, you know, you get access to that. So you start adding it all up and it gets, you know, it's close to $2,000, but you're not going to pay that. Right. It's just going to be a one-time payment of seven forty nine. Now I gotta be, I'll be honest with you. This price is going up um the end of this week it's, it's not going to be 749 it's going up um you know we've kept it down for we try to keep it down as as long as possible but um it's it's going up and just go to orderflows.com slash oft3 there's no recurring payments you know i hate that you know i see software out there. there's some software i do want to buy sometimes and it's on this recurring model i'll just you know you sign up for it you think, well, $79 a month, $99 a month, ah, oh, that's that's nothing. Then, you know, you go in later, you don't like it, you want to cancel it, you can't. You, know, you think you canceled it, but then you're still getting charged. You even close the charge, you know, the credit card company, you know, that you have, and then you're still getting charged somehow because it's somehow linked to your bank account. That's so frustrating. I, I hate that. Um, that's why we just have a one-time payment of $749. Now you're still going to need to pay your data fees. Obviously, you don't need level two; you just need level one. Um, you know, if you have a brokerage account, you can get it at, at pretty inexpensive prices. And obviously, if you're going to use the paid version of Ninja Trader, you got to pay for that. But this will run on the free version of Ninja Trader. So if you're using, you know, another system for your order entry, you can just get the free version of Ninja Trader, get some quotes fed into it, and run my software on it. So, again. You know, what other people are saying about the software, you know, it's remarkably helpful, Sheila writes, because she can clearly see what's happening in the market, right? That's what you want, right? You want to be able to understand what's happening in the market. So what you do is you go to orderflows.com slash off three. Um, it's in the chat box there, okay? Scroll down the page. Now you can watch the video and, and read the charts and all that, but you get started. Just click this button that says, click here. That's going to get you started takes you to PayPal. PayPal processes your payment. I don't get your credit card information. I don't want that. It's done through PayPal. And, you know, after buying it, go check your email, right? It'll take some time for PayPal to process it, but and generate, you know, the license tokens and, and things like that and, and course logins. But it's going to be sent to your PayPal email address. So again, it's just a one-time payment of $749. So go to off orderflows.com slash off3.html. So you got to ask yourself, right? Imagine, you know, last year is about the time that we started this, all these lockdowns around the world, right? Where are you now in your trading versus where you are a year ago? You're still in the same spot, right? You can stay where you are and, and go nowhere, right? By doing nothing. Or you can take some of what you've learned today and go out there and try and apply it on your own. Okay, nothing wrong with that. It could work trial and error for the next few months. And perhaps if you're lucky, you start to see some positive results. You may not realize that you're putting the cart before the horse, so to speak, instead of behind the horse. But 
the next option is to take action, right? Put the ball in the back of the net, right? You can let me take your hand and walk you step by step through each part of the process. Skip that trial and error, right? If you do the work, again, you know, remember trading, being a successful trader does involve work. Any line of business, any profession, you got to put in effort, right? It does Things just don't magically fall into your lap. Yeah, sure, you hear stories of that happening to people, but those are rare, right? In general, you got to put in some effort, right, to, to see some results. So figure out what motivates you, right? Maybe you want freedom to do what you want, freedom to go where you want, freedom to do nothing in life. You know, you sort of just sit back and chill out when you want to chill out, right? For me, trading has given me that freedom. You know, last summer, this past summer, my wife and I were just talking like, hey, you know what? Let's get out of here, right? We're in Illinois. It's all these lockdowns. Let's go out west, right? You go look at uh, VRBO, found a nice cabin out in South Dakota, we rented it for, you know, almost a week. We, you know, we just stayed out in South Dakota, saw, you know, what was it Devil's Peak? We saw Mount Rushmore. We saw all this stuff, you know, all these dinosaur dig sites for the kids. Because trading gives me that freedom, right? Say, you know what? I, I want to take a break. I don't have to go write an email to my boss. Oh, can I request this time off? And then the boss, well, you know, we're kind of short-staffed, you know, no, um, and things like that, right? Trading gives you that freedom to do what you want when you want. Right, that, that you just can't get sometimes in a lot of other places. Now, I got a special bonus for you guys. It's the order flow playbook. And this is a course I did, and it's got about 11, I think 10 or 11 trade setups based on the order flow. Okay, so I'm going to give you access to that for free, and I sell it, right, for $297. I mean, you can look on the website, go to orderflows.com slash playbook.html. You can see the page, it's 297. I'll give you that for free also. So you got a lot of ways to learn order flow, plus a live weekly group session, right? You can come in and ask your questions, but you got to get started, right? You got to go to orderflows.com slash off3.html. If you don't get started, you're not going to see any results. So again, what you're going to get, you're going to get the order flows trader 3.0, which is the current version. You're going to get the order flows trading course. You can get the order flow inner circle video series. You're going to get access to live weekly group training. And you'll get the access to the order flow playbook. Right. And again, you're going to get all of that for just $749. So at the beginning, I told you about my book. If you want my book on order flow, just go to orderflows.com slash book.html. Make sure you put the dot HTML at the end. And it takes you to this page. Just enter your email and your name click submit and takes you to the download page. Okay. You go to this page by itself, orderflows.com slash book. It's not available on that page. You have to go through that process. So again, get started now. Go to orderflows.com slash oft3.html. I see that uh, Anna has already put the link in the chat for you guys. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put the link in there for the book. If you just give me a second as well. so that you can get started, right? And again, you know, that that's, you know, the main point in life is about getting started. So, you know, I'll just go through, I got a little bit of time to go through some questions. Um, what is this here? Uh, do, 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 how is the bearish? Let me see here. Can order flow be applied to longer swing trading timeframes. And again, you know, you're dealing with order flow, right? And it's based on what's happening right now in the markets. And if you're, you, know, you could use it for trade entry, right? But you still at the same time, you, are, you gotta be managing the trade. And the best way to manage the trade is based on what's happening in the order flow, right? So if things turn, if you're long and things turn bearish in the order flow, well, chances are the trade's not gonna be very effective much longer um yes there will be a replay for this and you know another question i get often is you know does it work with forex does it work with stocks you know i'm a futures guy I, i've been in you know in chicago right it's, it's all the futures exchanges it's it's um yeah you can use it with stocks but again you know you have to be trading stocks that are 
liquid, right? That, that trade decent volume. So because again, you're, you're dealing with volume, so you want to have decent volume. Um, Pac-Man says, what's the link for the book? It's in the chat, but just go to orderflows.com. Here, I'll put the link back up here. Here, orderflows.com slash book.html. Larry asks, would like to review this in Traders World Magazine. Yeah, yeah, send me an email, Larry, about that. Now, you know, a question that I get is, you know, I've got a lot of tools because there's sort of a question in here about linking it with Strategy Builder in Ninja Trader. You know, a lot of these tools, they're they're not by themselves, right? I have other indicators based on order flow, right? That allow that really is everything step 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 required in it now sort of these tools right these these pre-programmed tools in the it's it's in there uh harry the tools that you see in the software right they're there to highlight specific actions in the order flow right because as a trader right you, you want to know when something is bullish or bearish and then you still got to put the pieces in the same you know, people say well it's not really automated well it's not it's not meant to be automated right it's to help you understand what's happening in the order flow so that's you know i, I don't really like to automate things to the sense that you know i just turn on the computer and walk away you know as a trader you have to trade right but this is to help you understand what's happening in the order flow as opposed to just giving you the volume numbers right it's saying hey you know what this volume is bearish or this volume is bullish or hey you know what you have this series of imbalances it's bullish right because you know it's easy to miss things in in the market right especially when a market's moving fast especially if you're trading you know nasdaq or mnq you know even es at times it moves very fast Right, you you want to have things that's going to help you process the information. Now, Harry, it's not in the chat. The email is or sorry, the book is. You have to go to this page, orderflows.com/book.html, and then you have to enter your name and your email address. So anyway, I'll end it there. Again, you know, Larry, send me an email um, about Traders World. And again, if you guys got any questions, you know, you can send me an email. My email is real simple. It's just mike at orderflows.com. So I'll end it there. Thanks, Anna, for having me. And you know what, everybody, enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are. I'm in Chicago, and it seems like winter is coming back, even though it's um, first day of spring is in a few days. So have a great week, everybody. And thanks for attending. Bye-bye.